Welcome back to Cheche. How prepared is the IBC to hold a credible and peaceful general election? How prepared are you to accept the election results as legitimate and acceptable? We've been discussing this all morning with today's guests, uh, lawyer Catherine Muma and election observer Mule Musao. So here's some of your feedback. Um, uh, 10 million strong. IBC hasn't put the right mechanisms in place, hence the rush to beat deadlines on constitutional timelines. They're not ready. Um, Festo, when we have no partiality on the part of the IBC, then the issue of disrupting peace and accepting defeat um, doesn't come up. Jacob, peace is equal to zero if credibility isn't zeroed uh, in the process. And then there's this question um, from Peter, when do we expect the IBC to have expunged the dead voters from the register? The KPMG report should be implemented and this came out last week and we had what 90,000 or so um, mm. dead voters. Um, mm. uh, how should the IBC address that? Because you, well, you, you did say one of your concerns mm. was the, the voter register. register. Yes, uh, well, after, after the verification exercise, the next step is supposed to be amendments or corrections to the register. That's where the cleaning is supposed to be uh, happening. Um, so the IBC is supposed to pick uh, whatever the report which is coming from KPMG, uh, look at the facts, and uh, because the recommendations are very clear, these announcements are supposed to be deleted, they need to be uh, deleted within a particular time. They are also supposed to take uh, the report coming from the verification process to be able to clean it further if there were problems with the, with, with the voter details or missing information, uh, then also that needs to be taken on board. Based on um, time, you know, it's, uh, I, I, from a legal uh, framework in terms of time, it's not very clearly stipulated exactly how much time they are supposed to be having. However, from internal um, uh, indications for me, IBC itself, in terms of its own set timelines, by 24th of, uh, of uh, June, they're supposed to be starting the process of certification of the register. So the, the issue should be that between now and between the, from the 10th, when the voter ver verification in our process ended to the 24th, giving them a, a window period of about 14 days, uh, that should be um, the period in which those corrections are being made. However, of course, we expect uh, a lot of input by uh, very many stockholders in terms of some of the issues that have been raised. Remember, KPMG, uh, one of the issues which is raised in that uh, report is that there is probably over a million <laughs> Uh, dead people who could be in the register. The ones that were identified uh, are 92,000. Uh, so who wants to imagine that there could be uh, over 900 others out there who are in that same register and we go to the, with the same, knowing the fine lines between, uh, you know, victory, in terms of victory between the contestants and the election of the last three elections have been very closely uh, contested. So you do not want a situation where we have a big number of people who could not, who could be not who are not supposed to be in the register doing that. So I think there's going to be a lot of more work uh, that the IBC has to do before that certification uh, process starts. Uh, whatever the debt, because it's not really cast on stone, uh, we need to see a process which is very clear in terms of how they clean. But that is the process that they are currently under, which is supposed to be underway at the moment. While well, while at that, when does the law say we should have a definite voter register? No, it's not clear. On that. The, 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 the law is not clear um, the, on, on, on when the voter register would be should be ready. But the IEBC has given a timeline time in terms yes. of the verification and uh, uh, cleaning up of the register. of the register. My view is that I, I hope they are working with the register of persons because the register of persons uh, is also computerized. Uh, so if they are working in isolation, they will come to tell us we didn't know how to get this, that, the other. Uh, properly speaking, uh, uh, yesterday Commissioner Kombe uh, talked about a uh, hundred young men who are working uh, throughout to try and clean those uh, young men and women, I guess, <laughs> who are trying to work. Uh, I will come to <laughs> who are coming, to, who are working on cleaning that uh, register. If I were there, I would advise that they publish the detail of the information that they are trying to verify so that we see they published the 200,000 names that are supposed to be maybe double mm. registered so that everybody can see these are the ones that we are trying to they should not do it in a hidden mm. manner post it and say let people actually come and even verify you mm. might expand somebody 
and uh, uh, but they must also get the immigration department uh, or, or the registrar of persons should send their information there for them to quickly verify if they are working in isolation then we will still have issues around whether uh, uh, whether this is the correct ID was this the old ID mm. uh, did you register with a passport or do you not register with a passport mm. let them make public the detail mm. of the KPMG report technology was um, apparently quite a heated conversation yes. um, um, and you know you, you talked about ensuring that uh, um, uh, you, you know that the kits work but um, what contingencies um, have been put in place so far none as far as we know uh, actually I'm not uh, aware of, of mm. what, what contingencies but but the chair of IBC has actually said they are prepared and they have prepared to deal with any risk factors so this this preparedness um, is what he needs to unpack yes he needs to unpack that uh, remember in 2013 we were told we are prepared we were told we had backup batteries and it flopped we were then told you somehow somebody forgot to charge, charge. and then during the case at the supreme court we were told about a green book and yes, a black book all of that. Mm -hmm. but so we were also told about server failures yes and so all of this you know technology is a very big um, um, concept for us when it comes to um, election and election preparedness how are we dealing with this though how do we ensure that um, the IBC has, sat is, has learned from the past the law the regulations actually provide that uh, the network provider will ensure there is uh, um, <laughs> internet uh, provision mm. again we need to find out in law if we put that in law can we have an assurance is it safaricom is it who Wh whoever else is coming can they come to assure the country that uh, between is it seventh and uh, ninth, and ninth? Uh, there is going to be no cable <laughs> no exactly so, so, so we need to find out is that law implementable is it uh, how do we hold uh, 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 those companies uh, accountable and uh, it would help for IBC to be able to uh, uh, to come very clear on those issues and, and, and as I've said explain it like we are babies mm. on how it's going to happen. That's what I, have to say. I wanted to say that uh, back, back to the point of the black box. You know, for me, this is the area which is very sensitive, uh, which is nearly opaque, because um, when uh, a, a lawyer of Catherine Stetcher uh, goes on TV and says she's not very sure what is happening, it's a major uh, statement to IEBC that if Catherine does not know that's how this process is. Technical competence. No, 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 I'm just saying in terms of, you know, these elections are supposed to be about the people. Yeah. The people need to understand how their process, you know, when you, you put, it's, it's, a small, it's supposed to be Article 86 of the Constitution talks about the simplicity, accuracy, verifiability, and transparency of an election. It's supposed to be that simple. Um, you cast your vote and you wait, you, you know, you know who you want to choose, you cast your vote in a transparent, that's why now we come with transparent ballot boxes, and this is counted in a transparent way, and then the results are announced in a transparent way. Now we're bringing in something called technology in between this particular process, between the input and the output. Which is black. Which is black. Opaque, actually. Uh, which is opaque, and people don't understand it. And that's why it must be explained in a way, as Catherine says, that a two-year-old can understand that this is what the process is. And uh, if uh, you, you put your biometrics here, these are how they are interpreted. Uh, in and and that, therefore we need to see uh, that information coming out. I also need to see a lot of testing, and testing which is where there is pa 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 participation by the media, by all stakeholders participating to see that. And the idea of a mock election is a very good uh, thing. Uh, I think that's coming up, and if it happens, we'll be able not to test the system. So that's a good, in terms of preparation, to, for us to be able to understand the system, that would be ideal. I've also seen I think again from the media and it's also in the conference that now at least they're having the, the power banks but like uh, like like Catherine again has said that even last time we were told <laughs> they are going to back up generators they are back up this but then still they're not happy it's a question of explaining the process laying it bare and testing as many times as you can before that election so that you can be a little confident by the way yesterday we were shown a video of mm -hmm. the South African uh, results center and you could see clearly 
uh, as the results are transmitted, they're actually projected clearly. They're just mm -hmm. adding up. So the other thing might be uh, the transmission. Mm -hmm. Once mm -hmm. transmission happens, wherever they are getting, to what extent are we, do we, do, is that process transparent enough so that the various presidential candidate agents will be there, uh, various uh, experts will be there to be able to know what is being transmitted from um, uh, uh, Shisende, that's in my home area, polling station, is actually arriving <laughs> and intact in the, and, and, and actually enhancing yes, yes, the speech yes, about yes, uh, yes, telling. But, yes. but, but, but Charles, we're winding up, but you did have a question. I, I, I'm wondering this will about, uh, about this, can, this company Dubai that has been given government. a contract to print ballot papers, considering the fact that in these elections, the, the ballots <coughs> are supposed, the votes are supposed to be counted at the polling station, and what is transmitted are results. To what if I mean, to what extent would extra ballot papers, for that matter, affect the outcome of these elections? What's the name? You're being disingenuous in your question, <laughs> but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I think from my intentionally, though. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think from my is it uh, uh, there are a number of issues. Uh, I think two issues. One is the trust deficit that we still have. Uh, the fact that we don't trust ourselves. Uh, uh, is a major problem. But the second part is that, uh, you know, for everything there's always the need for backup. You know, we start telling people uh, uh, when elections are happening that now we want this company again to start printing papers because we have run out of them. During the nomination uh, process, uh, we saw a number of areas where they ran out of ballot papers and they ran out of uh, even the boxes themselves. They had to go to the market to buy uh, boxes so they can bring, and you know, voters are waiting. And, and these are very tense affair. Uh, people always see mischief in everything. They can even think that uh, you go, you're going, going to buy ballot boxes so they can be able to come and you know stuff them. So it, I think it is, it is important to get what, we, what is required and if there is a need for excess, that excess needs to be explained, needs and to accounted. be serialized and accounted. It's the accountability aspect which would be a problem. But I can't see any contradiction or any issue with having extras especially when we know in this country we're going to have spoiled bot, uh, ballots and we're also going to have rejected. Very quickly, no, no, I was mm -hmm. just going to com comment on that. Mm -hmm. the, uh, our law provides for only three processes uh, that are electronic so far. We say it will progressively uh, mm -hmm. embrace uh, technology. Mm -hmm. uh, voter registration, voter identification and, and transmission. transmission. So the tallying will not be electronic. Mm -hmm. That's why it is important but the, 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 the ballots will actually be counted Moja, Billy uh, so it's important whether we have extras that can be stopped mm -hmm. yeah. so that very quickly, um, because we're winding up sorry Mutegi, um, Mule how would you juxtapose the findings of the party primaries against the election that we're going into and the conference that, that, that the IBC is holding I think one of the things which is very clear is first is the culture issue that uh, from the candidates, the voters uh, the same things that we always keep talking about, first uh, acceptance of voter bribery, you know, acceptance of, of flawed processes, happened in the party nominations and we never raised a lot of issues. Mm -hmm. So my issue is that do we want to move that to the elections. The next, the next question is the kind of uh, you know, fraud that we saw on the electoral, from the electoral offenses to the issue of violence. Uh, that there are still Kenyans out there who are not willing to accept results. There are also uh, people out there who do not want to resolve the issues through the judici judicial processes. So are we going to likely see the same when it comes to the main election? So there are lessons which, which we should learn. But some of what you said also, mm -hmm. high voter turnout, yes. um, accessibility by people with disabilities, responsiveness of the part of parties to um, emerging issues. Yes. So, so you did notice some sort of uh, improvement in our cultural behavior and the social nuances. So that, that, was, that yes. was actually a very good um, uh, finding. So we're also growing up. We, we are growing up. Uh, I mean, the kind of participation that we saw in those nominations was, uh, you know, unprecedented. So that is a beautiful story moving forward. They are beautiful stories, and I classify them as good, and they are also ugly things that we also saw from that. I think if you carry out the good things, uh, good voter turnout over 70 percent during the election will be doing very, very well. And also making sure that uh, persons with disabilities, our report indicates that women are being targeted in terms of the campaigns. We want to see that not happening uh, in terms of abuses uh, as we go to the elections. Mm -hmm. um, uh, one other thing that we, uh, we need to look at is the partnerships that IBC, IBC cannot deliver elections alone. 
they will partner with many other uh, institutions. It was sad, for instance, to see that the Registrar of Political Parties and the IEBC may not be speaking. You saw the Wabin and Deti mm. issue. Uh, Registrar says yeah. that he has this information, IEBC says I don't they don't have this information. Uh, uh, the Registrar didn't seem to have uh, the party registers. Mm -hmm. Parties actually, in fact, in my view, all the party primaries were a fraud because they used mm -hmm. IEBC register. IEBC register means ODM people voted in Jubilee and the Jubilee people voted in, mm -hmm. in the ODM elections, things like those. So, so, so uh, that partnership of the various actors and monitors, mm -hmm. I hope the monitors will be monitors when it comes to as opposed to, to, as opposed to being tourists. <laughs> These are the because observers. The, 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 yes, when you have the, the observers doing their job, that helps to ensure credibility of the process. If they are in the place and the people can see these are, uh, they are watching what we are doing. But if they go there for three minutes and then they go to Amkahawa and start mm -hmm. uh, discussing or they go and see the local attractions, they also contribute to the problems. We'll take it very quickly. <laughs> I c you, you wanted to ask a question? So You're fine. All right, so we'll, we'll start winding up then. Um, because uh, the question we've been asking um, our viewers is whether the IBC is ready. Um, and we haven't put that question to you um, so that we could hear your thoughts and ask you this question at the end. I would um, start with the panelists and allow our guests to have the final say. Um, Mutegi? Whether they are ready? Whether the IBC is, is ready for the um, August election. Obviously, they are not ready, but we hope they will be ready. They're, they're not ready, ready now, but we hope that yeah, they are. They, 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 they have a long way to go. They, you have, the whole thing we are discussing is that they are not being ready. Mm -hmm. But they have things to do. Charles? To do. Clearly, from what I've uh, uh, gotten from the experts here and the situation on the ground, they are not ready. We hope for the best. Well, mm -hmm. Well, as, uh, from where I stand, I know there are quite a number of processes which need to be still be undertaken. Um, I'm hopeful that if IBC engages, and uh, starting, as I said, starting with this uh, national election conference, we can be able to hack it in time for the elections. But there's, uh, we need to see a lot of work coming from the IBC and a lot of engagement coming from the IBC. And where there are problems, and we have cited this, if there are problems, they need to be communicated so that we can accept that there was, that was a problem and know what to do with that particular problem. That said, I just want to answer a uh, Catherine, uh, no, no, we don't have time for... for uh, just a, a, quick, just okay. a, quick, a quick one, just saying that we have stationary observers. We will not have to worry. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, Catherine? I, I would say IBC is not yet ready. Uh, they can be ready. Going forward, as I've said, let everything they do be on the, table. on the table. Let them bring stakeholders. And I would urge all players... If you can resolve issues even before going to court, mm -hmm. that will help too uh, in terms of the timelines because once the matter goes into court, we have to, again, the IBC has to hold on uh, 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 for the court to, to, to finalize that matter. So if IBC can keep calling all stakeholders to explain those issues mm -hmm. in simple terms so that people can actually uh, uh, together decide on uh, uh, how to move. What about voters? Are they ready? Because when I look at the feedback coming in, you can see um, clear political leanings. Um, and so do we need to do more in terms of voter and civic education to ensure that we behave better in terms of uh, where, um, where, where, where we are, we'll, I don't know whether we'll be able to talk about what is needed in this country is poli actually political education because people need to be politically conscious of Civic education. needs to come back into the curriculum. Yes, it needs to really come back into the curriculum. Because where we are headed now, it's much more, more voter education in terms of what the laws are, what the processes are, what the offenses are, and all those things. And then we move specifically to voter information closer to the election, which is now basically about how do we fill the ballots and uh, that's the process we are in at the moment. I don't think we are going to be sober enough to be able to look at the broader issues. Now, all the information And you have some interesting findings about people being assisted. Yes, uh, which is very in the nomination process, for instance, in Kilifi, 8 out of 10 women were being assisted. Uh, that is, those are very large numbers, unacceptable actually. Uh, for one in five in Kiambu, which is just across the, uh, part of the metropolitan around here. So you don't expect such figures during the elections. That's it's, it's the reason why we need intensive What's the problem with voter, that, uh, voter education. Uh, with the, the, problem, the, 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 the problem with having a high number of assisted voters basically is that there's manipulation which is going on. 
such a perception because you cannot eight women are being told what to do in terms but of voting in view of the number of yeah. candidates in view of the number of candidates particular mcas why we some some constituencies we have hundred people in the mcas whatever and the president or all the that means that there will be more need for vote assistance and that's what i'm saying and then that's important isn't it and that's why we're saying that we need to have that information to the voter, to them for they have to understand this. Because 80% of this country, 80% of the voters in this country, uh, if they were to be assisted, then you're saying there are 80% opportunities for, for oh, manipulation oh. Of, or disenfranchising of that vote. My, my, my view would be that let's uh, call on the public. All voters should actually come out to vote, whether they're going to be assisted or not. In my view, this process needs to start being taken over by the citizens and one of it is insist that this is about us making choices turn up in every corner of the country hold on to that line whether you're going to be assisted or not and vote so the, and, and uh, to me that is the number one when we boycott we actually play into the manipulation of the politicians because for them it actually suits some of them that we boycott so I would say any Kenyan who wants to take back the electoral process this time let everybody come out you vote and thereafter planning begins the day after elections not six months after the elections which is a great place to end the show on yeah. thank you very much so that's all we have time for this morning today's guests were Catherine Muma a constitutional uh, gender and human rights lawyer she was also a former commissioner of the Constitution Implementation Commission the CIC we also had Mule Musao the national coordinator of the Elections Observer Group or ELOG we thank you for your time on Cheche this morning our thanks also to our panelists Jose Ginjao and Charles of Yambo my name is Udwa Kamimo thank you for watching and engaging with us here on Cheche We'll see you next week.